Good evening. 80 passengers and the driver had a narrow escape when a KMB double-decker bus caught fire in Wang Tai Sin. The dramatic incident happened on Longcheng Road near the tail end of this evening's rush hour. A passenger noticed smoke at the back end of the bus and alerted the driver who stopped the vehicle and ordered everyone out. The bus was gutted by the fire, which was put out after 20 minutes. It's suspected that the blaze was caused by a mechanical problem. The Chengsha Wan wholesale market reopened today, increasing the amount of locally raised chickens available to shoppers. But despite a bigger supply, prices have not come down. ATV's Winner Wang reports. The Changsha Wan wholesale market reopened today, three weeks after it was shut, following the discovery of the H7 avian flu virus in a batch of mainland chickens. During the closure of the wholesale market, chickens raised locally were sent to an inspection center in Takuling before being distributed to wet markets across the city. The site could only handle around 6,000 birds a day, triggering a rise in the price of chickens. Now that the Changsha Wan market is up and running again, supply has increased. 17,000 local chickens were sent there today for checks and redistribution. But there's been no comfort for consumers. Vendors said the price remains the same at around $60 a caddy. Fresh mainland chickens are still banned, and it's not known when imports can begin again. We certainly hoped the uh, mainland poultry supply could be resumed before the Lunar New Year. Uh, but I, I think the, uh, there is more uh, to be done for the mainland authorities to ensure the uh, infection, infection control measures before um, uh, the resumption so as to minimize the risk of introducing um, avian flu into Hong Kong. According to Ko, imports can resume only a day or two after the mainland makes appropriate arrangements. Winawang, ETV News. The Occupy protests last year have been blamed for Hong Kong sliding down an index of the world's most livable cities. The SAR is now 33rd on a list headed by Singapore. ATV's Emily Sue reports. Last year's Occupy mass protests hogged international headlines for weeks, if not months. While many were impressed by the generally peaceful nature of the 79-day protest, the pro-democracy campaign did change perceptions about Hong Kong. According to consulting firm ECA International's latest Global Livability Index, the SAR dropped 16 places last year, from 17th to 33rd. The plunge was blamed squarely on the road blockades during the sit-ins. We've seen um, considerable or manifestation of social political tensions. Um, anti-government protests. So that had an indirect impact on the lifestyle of all Hong Kong residents, both local-born residents as well as the expatriate population here in Hong Kong. Protest sites were cleared last month, but the city's political reform plans appear to have reached a dead end, with pan-democrats vowing to vote down the government's electoral blueprint in June. That could trigger another wave of protests and could foil a rebound on the index. Then we will unlikely see Hong Kong rise up on, back up in those rankings um, throughout the course of the next 12 to 24 months. Other Asian cities ahead of Hong Kong in the livability index include Singapore, ranked number one, Australia's Adelaide and Sydney in joint second, while Osaka is fourth. 23 people were killed in fires across Hong Kong last year, almost doubled the number in 2013. Firefighters received more than 36,000 calls last year and met their response target 90% of the time. ATV's Alison Chan reports. Fire Services Director Lai Man Hin told the media today that fires claimed 23 lives last year, compared with 12 deaths in 2013. The number of people injured was 295, down from 369 in the previous year. Firefighters were called out 36,335 times last year, a decrease of 1.2 percent from 2013. Around 90 percent of the cases were handled within the targeted response time. The fatalities included principal fireman Leung Kuo Kei, who died from severe head injuries suffered in a gas explosion at a public housing estate in Shekip May in November. Eight other firefighters were injured, five of them critically. 
Lies said an internal investigation into the deadly blast will be released to the public. He also pledged to review firefighting equipment and ensure better protection for firefighters. Alison Chan, ATV News. A local MPC delegate has defended his controversial proposal for China's national security law to be implemented in Hong Kong. The Beijing loyalist says that's because the SAR government has not set up a table to enact Article 23. Here's Emily Su. Stanley Ng stirred up a storm earlier this week when he suggested that the mainland's national security law be implemented in Hong Kong through an annex in the basic law. Even the pro-establishment camp cast doubts about Ng's proposal to fill the gap before the SAR government enacts its own national security laws. Under Article 23 of the Basic Law, Hong Kong is required to introduce legislation to prohibit acts of treason, secession, sedition and subversion against the central government, but there's no deadline. Ng, a National People's Congress delegate, defended his controversial proposal today, saying he only came up with the idea because the SCR government doesn't even have a timetable for Article 23. He warned the government not to procrastinate indefinitely because it has the constitutional responsibility to enforce national security laws. While blaming the entire public for the delay, Ng singled all Penn Democrats, saying they feel that Article 23 targets them specifically. But he said only those who want to endanger China or split the country should be scared. Speaking during a visit to Fuzhou in Fujian province, Chief Secretary Carrie Lam confirmed that the government has no plans to launch any studies or preparations on Article 23. Pro establishment lawmaker Priscilla Leung and Jack Lee, a former editor of Hong Kong University's student union magazine Undergrad, took to the airwaves this morning as they joined the debate. <laughs> Lee said he's worried that the magazine and another student publication, which were both denounced by Chief Executive Leung Chenying for discussing Hong Kong independence, will be considered illegal under Article 23. Priscilla Leung warned against a rush to endorse national security laws. In response to Ng's proposal, the Communist Party mouthpiece Global Times questioned 6,000 people on the mainland and found that 97 percent of them support applying China's national security law in Hong Kong. The government had tried to introduce Article 23 in 2003, but after half a million protesters took to the streets, the bill was shelved. More schools have adopted policies against sexual harassment. But first, in our local wrap, the elderly and chronically ill have been urged to be vaccinated against flu. ATV's Joyce Wu reports. Since the beginning of the year, 70 people suffering from flu-related illnesses have been admitted to intensive care units in public and private hospitals. 31 of the patients died. In a bid to prevent more infections during the current flu season, health officials said the elderly and those with chronic ailments should be vaccinated. Many more schools are adopting anti-sexual harassment policies. The Equal Opportunities Commission said 88 percent of 500 primary and secondary schools and tertiary institutions polled have implemented such policies. Uh, I think um, all stakeholders should be concerned because they are legally binding to uh, observe this uh, anti-sexual harassment uh, policy in, in order to protect uh, their staff, their students, and it is their responsibility to, to do just that. Sir noted that more teachers have been trained to stop sexual harassment. Around 50 residents of the city's only private rental housing estate have staged a protest against its operator's decision to build flats for young people on the site. The demonstrators from Taihang Sai Estate in Jiaqib Mei chanted slogans outside government headquarters in Tamar. They are demanding to be relocated in the same district or be given priority to buy government-subsidized homes. Joy Su, ATV News. A new security scare has emerged following reports that more than 300 Chinese nationals have passed through Malaysia to join the Islamic State militant group in Iraq and Syria. ATV's Arthur Okiola reports. Malaysia's national news agency Bernama quoted Home Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi as saying more than 300 Chinese nationals had used the country as a transit point on their way to the Middle East. Their final destination was Iraq or Syria where the extremist group Islamic State has seized large areas. Ahmad Zahid was given the information by the Chinese Vice Public Security Minister Meng Hongwei at a meeting in Kuala Lumpur. 
Both countries said they were concerned about the development and would try to tackle the problem jointly. The security scare follows a surge in violence in Xinjiang, where Muslim Uyghurs have accused Chinese authorities of trampling on their religious and cultural rights. In Tokyo, Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga insisted that his country would not cave into a threat by Islamic State to kill two Japanese hostages. The militants say the pair will die unless Tokyo pays a ransom of 200 million U.S. dollars. Arthur Rukiola, ATV News. Protests have erupted in the U.S. after another case of police killing a black man. Footage captured from a dashboard camera of a police vehicle showed the tense moments when officers, one black and the other white, stopped a car near Philadelphia. The officers drew their weapons after one of them thought he saw a gun in the vehicle. When a man got out with his arms raised, they shot and killed him. The shooting happened last month, but the footage was released only this week. Sports now starting with the Asian Cup. China were left heartbroken after they were beaten by hosts Australia in the quarterfinals.